Let's look at six contributions to the development of modern atomic theory. The first is based on a model of the atom developed by John Dalton in 1805. All the material stuff around us is made up of atoms, lots of tiny indivisible spherical particles. Each chemical element has its own distinctive kind of atom. So a lump of carbon, say, is composed of lots of carbon atoms, all identical to each other. The atoms of different elements have different weights relative to each other. So for example, one oxygen atom weighs the same as 16 hydrogen atoms. Because an oxygen atom is 16 times heavier than a hydrogen atom. This explains why, when elements react chemically to form compounds, they do so in fixed proportions by weight. It's all got to do with the relative weights of the atoms combining. In 1889, J.J. Thompson discovered the electron, a particle with a negative electric charge. He stripped off atoms by applying a high voltage across electrodes. He modified Dalton's model of the atom, postulating that electrons are embedded in the atom, like bits of plum in a pudding. The pudding-like material that makes up the bulk of the atom is positively charged balancing the negatively charged electrons to create an electrically neutral atom. In 1911, Ernest Rutherford further modified the model of the atom. He fired high-energy particles, called alpha particles, at gold foil. He found that most of the alpha particles passed straight through, and just a few were deflected. This led him to propose that most of the interior of an atom is actually empty space, with most of the mass and all of the positive charge concentrated in a tiny central region called the nucleus. If the nucleus was the size of a marble in the middle of a football field, the electrons would be dots out at the edge of the field, with nothing in between. In 1913, Niels Bohr came up with the idea that electrons orbit the nucleus in a number of nested shells, each having a specific energy level. The higher the energy level, the further out the shell is from the nucleus. Electrons are able to move or jump between shells. Let's say an electron moves from a high energy outer shell to a low energy inner shell. It will emit a photon of light whose frequency corresponds to the energy difference between the two shells. And it can go back the other way by absorbing the same frequency of light. Bohr's model can be used to explain why samples of hydrogen emit or absorb particular frequencies of light. In 1926, Erwin Schrödinger developed an equation that treats electrons as wave-like phenomena. On this model, electron shells can themselves be subdivided into subshells, each of which is associated with a number of orbitals, resulting in a more detailed description of electronic energy levels. However, this entails giving up the idea that electrons orbit the nucleus like miniature planets orbiting a tiny sun. Instead, an orbital can be visualized as a cloud of negative charge surrounding the nucleus. The denser parts of the cloud represent regions where an electron occupying the orbital would spend most of its time. Rutherford had already discovered that the nucleus contains positively charged particles he called protons. In 1932, James Chadwick discovered the nucleus also contains particles he called neutrons. A neutron has about the same mass as a proton, but is electrically neutral, so can add extra mass to the atom without adding any extra charge. By varying the number of neutrons contained in the nucleus of an atom of a particular element, you obtain different isotopes of that element. 